You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. for over 35 years brings her experience to your ministry. Be it energizing your staff or working through conflicts with your faith community. So now, please welcome the host of Aflame Ministry, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Welcome. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning, and you are listening to A Flame Ministry. We are here today on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And as a reminder to all of you, as I start out every show, this is a show about ministry for people of all faiths, uh, those who are professionals in ministry, as well as those who are part of a um, faith community. Uh, and there's always two goals. Um, sometimes we concentrate more on one than the other, but one is to dispel misconceptions between faiths and build bridges, and the other is to discuss issues of ministry that are common to most, if not all, faiths, and often all faiths because they deal with issues about us as human beings. And my guest today is Cheryl Jennings. Uh, Cheryl is an international speaker and international best-selling author. She shares her stories of hum- of hope with humor and humility through a journey with a cerebral palsied son. And Cheryl has also been a successful realtor, broker, coach, and entrepreneur. She loves to sh- Uh, share her stories of overcoming obstacles to encourage others to reach for the stars. Uh, Cheryl is also a member of the National Association of Professional Women and a VIP Woman of the Year Circle member. She's in Continental Who's Who in Business and has been nominated for the Collaborator of the Year Award in Public Speakers Association. She is co-author of two books. Uh, The first one is Hashtag Love, a new generation of hope, and the other is the challenge five. And so, Cheryl, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to a flame ministry this morning. So, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Kathleen. I'm so delighted to be here. Um, I'd love to have you share with our listeners uh, something of your story, the story uh, about your son and what that has been like for you. Okay. Um, And I also have now been about 10 books (laughs) and I have one of my own. So I'm, I am always writing. I love writing. And part of it because I just see some of the challenges that we faced from the time we had a son with cerebral palsy and he is now almost 48, but all through his life, I have met more people who go through challenges that are similar. And the, the reason I want to reach out to people is because one of the top problems they face is that they feel all alone. They don't think anybody could understand how hard it is, what they're going through, how hard it is to find resources. And I truly understand those things. And I've helped with caring for a mother-in-law, my both of my parents and my mom just passed away this last year, but, you know, trying to juggle between caring for family members is a very difficult thing. And for millions of people, it means they have to give up a job they love to be able to take on the full role of caregiving. And our son was born, you know, in 1970, and there wasn't a lot known about cerebral palsy. And we had to search in old, old library books because there was no internet. And now at least we have 
an internet where we can search for the topics that we know we need to look for, like a diagnosis. But at that time, we waited six weeks to get any information for a diagnosis. And then we went to the doctors and said, what does this mean? And they go, we don't know. Do whatever you can. And then several times we were told to put our child away, forget we ever had him and just have more children. And oh. that's not an option. Oh. But I just want to mm. dispel the notion that doctors know everything. And if a doctor tells you to give up hope, don't do it. Just find a way to try to look for someone who's been successful in at least trying to work with a child and reach out and ask, where did you find that information? How did you know what to do? And they will say, I had to hunt. <laughs> and I have met the most incredible people on the radio show that I do, Courage to Overcome, where I have met so many people who are now doctors or they're writers, they're speakers. And it's because they had a child with autism or some other problem that they became an expert in what it is that they needed help with. So that's kind of in a nutshell why I'm out there. And it's a passion to keep the doors open for people to talk and to say, you know, I'm struggling. I don't know what to do. And then that way somebody else can say, oh, well, here's what I did. Maybe that'll help you. And just opening conversations mm. about struggle will do more than hiding in your house and pretending that it's not as bad as you feel like it is. So, you know, the, it's, the main thing that I see is that a lot of people who've gone through hardships don't want anybody to know it's hard until it's too late to help them. And I just want to say, hey, wave that flag uh, and say, help me. <laughs> I'm drowning. <laughs> Yeah, we're not a culture that, um, for many of us who, uh, I mean, the, the American spirit is, you know, do it myself type of thing. And reaching out for help is sometimes seen as weakness. And unfortunately, because that it takes a strong person to ask for and receive help as well. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. Now, you mentioned your radio show, um, and Cheryl has a show on this network, BBM Global Network. Uh, Cheryl, give us the time and dates of that show so that for people who may want to listen in on your show too. Oh, thank you. Yes. It's called Courage to Overcome, and it's on Monday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, 7 Mountain Time, and 6 Pacific. And our shows, both Kathleen's and mine, they can be heard around the world. So we love it when people want to share the resources because we're only out there to try to help people. And it's not that we have all the answers. We're searchers. And we're interviewing people to try to find out something we haven't heard before, or we don't know about, and share that information with people that need it. And for mine, I'm trying yeah. to find out what gave people courage to go ahead and take care of a child with special needs or to care for their parents or to care for a spouse that maybe comes back from the war and they don't have all their limbs and they got PTSD or, or they have tragedies that happen with diseases like muscular sclerosis, MD, ALS. I mean, there's so many things that we're looking for answers anymore that are so debilitating. And if I know of a resource, I want you to know what I found and not keep it a secret. So that's what we do on there on that program. And I really appreciate you sharing that with others. Uh, uh, thank you for telling me and all the rest of my listeners about that as well. Um, but one of the, the things I know you, we talked a little bit uh, earlier, and you shared with me one of the really unique struggles that you've gone through with your son, and that is uh, at a time where your family moved from one state to another state, and the kind of impact that that had that you maybe weren't thinking about ahead of time. If you can uh, give us a little tidbit. Well, hang on. Just hold that thought. 
because we're going to have to take okay. a break here um, for a couple, for some words from our sponsors. And this is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. You're listening to A Flame Ministry. We're going to come back with Cheryl to talk about uh, going back between states in just a couple of minutes. So please stay tuned. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Welcome back. This is A Flame Ministry, and I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Uh, you're listening on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and my guest today is Cheryl Jennings. Um, we're talking about um, being a caregiver, and Cheryl, you mentioned you your son has cerebral palsy, and uh, one of the things you are passionate about is helping people understand the courage uh, to keep going and to be a caregiver and not to give up hope. And before the break, I mentioned that at one point you shared with me that you found a, a unique challenge when your family moved to a different state. Uh, would you please share some of that with our listeners? Sure. And this is something that we did not know ahead of time. And we were to the point that we needed help all the time with our son because my health had broken down and I was being cared for. And when we found out where he was going to go to a state school that was residential at the time, it was one that had a terrible reputation. And they had stories on the news every night about kids dying, how they were treated, and it wasn't good. And I was kind of a basket case, but we did not, we were not able to lift him anymore. I had broken my health down. I had to be cared for myself. I had a baby, another little child, and my mother-in-law was living with us because my father-in-law had passed away. And so we had to have help. And when he went to this place, I was so upset. Well, then we found out we were moving from one state to another and when we were visiting the new state, we just said, you know, where would he go if he was here? And they said, oh, a beautiful, wonderful new place that would only be about uh, an hour from where we lived. And so we were excited. We went and got him, took him out, moved. And in two weeks, my husband had pulled his back and we couldn't oh. take care of him. But we had already found out that we were not qualified to get services until we had lived in the state and he had been on a waiting list for about 270 something people. Well, that was not good news. Okay. We didn't know what we were going to do. We couldn't get help at school. There was one hour of help a day, nobody to help us lift him, to bathe him, to feed him, to do everything. 
And when my husband pulled his back, we jumped in the car, loaded up everything, and drove back to the state capitol where we had just moved from and said, we need to see the head of the program. And basically what happened was we just kept waiting it out till late afternoon when we found out they weren't going to talk to us. And they said, well, let us help you with the new state. And they called down there to see what they could do to help us. And when they said, I want to talk to Ms. Jennings, they were chewed me out and said, just who do you think you are to get in line before other people? Your child has to wait just like everybody else. Well, I don't know if parents who have children that need full-time care are aware that someday their bodies may give out or they could have a car accident, they could get cancer, they could have a stroke, they could have many things happen that would make them unable to care for their child. So my suggestion is Mm -hmm. learn early what's available and get your name on the list as early as possible because you don't know when that time's gonna come. And if the name comes up before you're ready, you just stay there, but they'd let somebody go ahead of you. But what we learned was that there was no choice for us. And so we left that state capitol that afternoon going, we only have one option and that's to make my husband's mother guardian. And she wasn't capable, but she lived in that state and that meant they would have had to take our son and help us. So we fought it. We tried to get help, and we went to a lawyer, and he said, this is just ridiculous. I can't imagine that you have to do this. Well, we got him back into the state school that we hated, and we had to drive 500 miles, and I went every month to see about him. In the meantime, we started writing letters to senators, to the president, to everybody, and it took 22 months to get help. And in the meantime, he had to have surgery. I had to stay there. I mean, it was it was a nightmare time in our lives. But, you know, I just don't think that the average person realizes how limited the resources are. And now they don't like to put them in a state school. And the one he was in in Texas, once we got there, provided all kinds of therapy. He learned to be an artist by an art teacher wow. just saying, okay, we're going to paint to get range of motion uh-huh. and his paintings were recognized at Texas A&M and then he's got some in California or in Seattle at the University of Washington and some other places but they're not all negative is my point but then we also once we had lived where we were for a while it was so far we had to move him again and we moved him closer to us in a group home and we had very hard experiences there with things being stolen, not being treated Um, very well. We moved him. And once when I, I got a call one day and they said, by law, we have to call and tell you your son has been assaulted by a caregiver. It was the most horrible, um, horrible feeling. We got in our car and we went down to see about him. And then they immediately started changing their story and they soon started saying, well, he must have done it to himself. And the, his right hand oh. that would have had to hit him was immobile. So, I mean, it wasn't true. Oh. And they tried to steal everything they could of his. And, I mean, it, there are lots of stories of heartaches that turn out, though. I can just tell you this, Kathleen. Many times in our lives when we've gone through something that's so devastating and so out of our control to, you know, to prevent, God opens a a beautiful window for us. And because of that, I just, we, you know, got people to investigate what happened. But then I took off and started trying to interview new companies to see what was available. And I spent a week on the road just doing that. And at the end of that time, I wasn't sure what to do, but I was determined he was moving. And they said, well, there is a young family that has kept another boy before, and maybe they would be willing to do it. So I just uh, made an appointment the next week. We drove over to meet them. And long story short, they were an answer to prayer we did not even know to pray for and he's been with them ever Mm. since he lives in their home and their kids just love him and he's just family Uh and he's family to friends to grandparents and it's amazing 
So we do have a happy ending, but parents have to be involved. And we have to tap and take another break, but the, you've raised so many issues and questions with that. Um, please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page -page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Welcome back. This is A Flame Ministry, and I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning, and this is Tune In Radio and the BBM Global Network. My guest today is Cheryl Jennings, and before the break, Cheryl, you were telling us about experiences you've had with trying to get uh, help and services for your son and what happened with moving and uh, some abuse that happened uh, in a residential treatment facility, a group home type setting. And that can bring up a lot of questions in people's minds, in, including people of faith. You know, why? Why is God letting this happen? Why doesn't everything go better? Uh, and, you know, why the struggle? What kinds of things have you been able to share with people uh, in that regard? Oh, thanks for asking that, because that is one of the most common questions and people that get angry at God about what happens in their life have very little understanding about how God works. You know, if you are reading in the Bible, you see so many examples of people who had hardships. They did not have an easy life, but it was a way that, you know, we're tested in our faith. Now, God never tempts us, and James tells us that God will never tempt you to do wrong, but it, he allows the testing to prove that we really are believers, that we are obedient. But one of my questions that I, uh, people don't get into deep religious uh, questions sometimes. They're just simply, or why did God let that happen to me? Why did he let my child be uh, killed in a drunk driving situation? Or why did, you know, my child do this or that happen? Or why my parents, why did they have to have cancer or something really bad? And what I have found that is just so much more comforting is to think, okay, God knew that we were going to have hardships. So he said, I'll always be there. Come give me your burden. You know, let me help you. But we want to take care of everything ourselves. So we don't tend to let him help us a lot of times. We wait until we're in a crisis to pray. And then we just want it to be over with. But he allowed his own son to die on the cross, which was a hard death. But yet it was because he loved us so much that that was the only way we could have salvation and go to heaven. 
But when things are that are hard for us to go through, and we're asking why, why, Lord, why did this happen? Well, when people are asking why, Lord, why does this happen? Just think about that for just a moment. What if you knew why? What are you going to do about what, what you have to deal with now? So why is not the real problem to ask. The real problem is what are you going to do about it? How is it going to affect your life? Are you going to be a bitter person about it, or will you become better and stronger because you've gone through really tough challenges and you came out knowing more than you did before? You've been tested. You're stronger. You've got more character. You have more understanding of other people who've gone through hardships. Use what you learn and see it as a way of gaining knowledge and getting stronger. But even if you know why, you still have to decide what are you going to do about it. And I've known people Mm -hmm. who became so bitter against God and everybody else that nobody wanted to be around them. They were just negative. They only saw bad things. And that's not pleasant to be around. But if you let it make you a stronger person and you're determined to use what you learn to help other people, then your life can be amazing. And you can be such a blessing to so many people who are also struggling because they know that you have. And for me, when I'm walking down a street and I have a, a child in a wheelchair, no matter how big he is, people see my problem. But I can guarantee you that every person that's out there has something, even if you never know what they're struggling with. And they just need to know it's okay that you can make it. You're not by yourself. And there are many other people going through some of the same battles that you are. You just don't know them. And so we just need to connect with more people and say, how did you survive when your husband died or when your child was sick? How did you do that? Because people give up easily these days. They want somebody to take away their problems. And really, you'll never be strong as long as you want somebody else to alleviate your troubles. You know, you think about uh, the people that you know that are struggling. Just look at their character and how strong many of them are. So that's how I answer, why God? Why did you do this? He didn't. Yeah, Uh, yeah, and um, for the... For those who are Jewish and Muslim, you know, even what us, as Christians we call the Old Testament, the, the the stories of Abraham and Moses and David, they all all had to struggle through many many different things. But you also bring up the value of community and wow. um, not doing this alone, and so that you know, finding the people, but even if it's not somebody going through the exact same thing as you are, having a community around you that's supportive and caring. And do you find that that is, uh, whether it's a faith community or family or whatever that may be, uh, how important has that been to you, Cheryl? Oh, it's it's vital. It is absolutely what helps you to keep going many times, knowing that you have people that care about you, they love you, they want to know that things are getting better, they are praying for you. And I, you know, if you start thinking about it, isn't that what Alcoholics Anonymous started with, with the community of saying, I'm going through this problem and the strength of the community supporting each other is what makes them go. Now we have communities for divorced people. We have communities for cancer victims. We have it for all kinds of issues. Well, we have it for people who have children with cerebral palsy, with autism. There are groups everywhere. And now we have a, a added benefit of having the Internet where we can join communities and visit with people without ever sitting down and talking to them. And our son was in the hospital Mm -hmm. last year, and I got so many texts from people saying, I'm praying for you. Are you taking care of yourself? How are you doing? Don't forget, you tell others to take care of themselves. Are you able to? And that Mm -hmm. meant so much to us to know we were thought of. And many of those people I've never personally met. I've met them online. And so we can be in that supportive group, even if it's online. And that's why I tell people, if you don't know how to find them, 
write me a note and I will help you find a community that you can belong to because it is absolutely what's going to help you to stay sane and, and get the support you need. Yeah, that, that, you know, that, that is so important uh, to know that uh, there are people who care about us who, and we're not, doing this all alone and we need to take a, another break um, we will be right back this is the flame ministry and i am your host pastor kathleen panning please stay tuned global glory that's the work of dr marina mclean coo of global glory whose calling is to serve god a first generation british born londoner of jamaican descent dr mclean inherited the hunger for the word from her father who was a bible teacher growing up her home was filled with missionaries from the caribbean islands and america and she travels the world preaching the gospel She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Theology and an Honorary Doctorate of Divinity and Christian Counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards she is a spirit book of the year gold medal living now book award winner and her book is a number one amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the living now spirit book of the year an inspirational speaker mj will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life your life did not just happen to you you chose it which means you can change it visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024 Welcome back. You are listening to Tune In Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for A Flame Ministry. My guest today is Cheryl Jennings. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're talking about um, caregiving for, in Cheryl's case, a, a son with cerebral palsy, but anybody who's uh, caregiving in many ways. And we were just talking about the role and importance of community, having a so- community. And for many people, a faith community can be that. So Cheryl, can you share some of the helpful things that may have come to you through a faith community and maybe some things that haven't been so helpful? I sure will. And this is one of the things that um, I've studied a lot about. My husband's a minister. I've been living in a minister's family my whole life. So the Faith is very important to me, and I have seen so many people be surrounded with love and help when they were going through a difficult problem, and we have too. Let me just say, first of all, that most churches don't know how to help people with disabilities, and you have about 90% of the people who have children with disabilities who will never go to church anywhere or if they do, they won't return because people are uncomfortable around that child. And they'll say things like, oh, I just couldn't help them, or we don't have a class for them. And they indicate that it's too much trouble, or your child makes noise. We just, you know, and they'll ask them to get up and move to a different place or something. We need to be kinder to people that are going through that. Of all people in the world that know that they need strength, it's people who have the role of a caregiver. So we need to be kinder and open our doors more to people who have the struggles of caregiving and help comfort them and offer things like sitting with a child or doing something. What A few things that have happened, I'll tell you, I've had uh, positive and negative. But positively, I know when we were young, we were having to drive our son 90 miles a day, three days a week. Each way was 90 miles 
he couldn't sit up. He cried all the time. We had to ba- make our back seat into a bed. We didn't have seat belts at the time. And he cried the whole time, going and coming. Mm-hmm. Well, our little car ended up needing a new motor, and some people said, we need to come and visit you. And when they did, we were scared. What have we done? Have we done something we shouldn't have done? We didn't know what was, they were coming for. And they said, we know that y'all are struggling. You don't have much money, and we just want to be able to buy the new motor for your little car. I mean, that just blew us away that mm. somebody was watching and knew what we needed. And I'm not saying you're going to always get that kind of help. But when you become mm. close to the people that you can meet with on a regular basis and worship God, you are really in a group of people who can can alleviate some of the needs that you have and they will gladly offer without you asking. But also when he was growing up, sometimes there were classrooms that he didn't really fit in. But I can remember one of the rooms that one of the little boys would always finish his work early so he could go over and help Blake and talk to him and help him do something on a piece of paper. Um, The problem that we've had, and, and I'm sure this is just something that happens sometimes, but one place we were, uh, people were critical of us because they said, I didn't, I didn't really love Blake because I didn't get him a drink of water between Bible class and worship. Well, that was not right. Mm. And that wasn't even something that I could do with him because he couldn't drink out of a cup and he was past the, uh, the baby bottles. And so you know, to judge somebody on that, I can say that wasn't right. And I've had people, you know, that had a child with some other problem think I should be doing what they're doing and be critical. But that's not the normal, okay? It was a way of, I think when you learn what to do, you just need to go and get to know people and visit with them. And, and maybe you can offer a suggestion that could be used, but don't be critical. Don't think you know more about other people in their lives and what they should do than they know. They know their child better than, than you do. But, um, you know, this is just a a while ago, I was talking about uh, moving from state to state. And I just wanted to say that we lost our benefits going from one state to the other. And if we moved him again from a one state to another, we would lose the benefits because they'd be back on a waiting list. And this is something that happens because Medicaid and some of the programs that are out there to help us are also individual state mandates. So those are things that I'd like for people to understand and to realize that we need to be supportive of all families who are caregiving. Right now, there's like 50 million people home caregiving without pay. Well, we are coming along with a lot of us that are baby boomers who are soon going to need help. And there's been a study lately this last week that came out and said we're running out of caregivers. Well, we need to learn how to do it because someday it will be our parents that need the help, even if it's not our child. So I hope that helps some of the listeners to know a little bit about faith, how important it is, but also to be searching at all times and be open to helping other people. So if I can, to take us back a little bit to the faith communities, what about accessibility issues for your son? Um, What kinds of things have you run into just physically being able to get him in and out of places? Well, that has been a challenge, but, you know, our new laws to have disability um, uh, doors that are wider for those in wheelchairs, be able to have ramps, parking places and things like that have made a huge difference. And I have people all the time asking, why do people that don't need the parking space park in a handicapped parking space? We need to be conscious of that. But that's something that we can all do on a daily basis. Okay, we have to take another break. We'll be back (laughs) and talk a little bit more about this. Uh, You are listening to the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Um, This is a Flame Ministry. Please stay tuned. 
The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. We are back, and you are listening to TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for Aflame Ministry. My guest is Cheryl Jennings, and we've been talking about, um, Cheryl, your experiences with your son who has cerebral palsy and caregiving and uh, what it's like uh, to have a child or anybody that you're caring for uh, and the needs of that. And we're talking a little bit about accessibility issues. And and I'm thinking especially about uh, houses of worship, places of worship, and because I know that uh, at least many of those that were built you know, prior to uh, the recent laws, are not as accessible uh, as the current buildings and structures are. What kind of challenges has that posed for you and uh, your family and your son? Okay. Well, and one of the things that, you know, I had my father that had a stroke and he couldn't use one side. And I know there are places, many of the bathrooms have got a railing on one side. Well, it was on the wrong side. So if they could provide railing mm-hmm. that could manage to be on both sides for people that have strokes, that's a very important thing. If it's um, an older building, many times we would arrive, there'd be a lot of steps. So we either couldn't go or yeah. we had to get four or five people to help pick up a wheelchair with a son in it. And lift him up those steps so we need to be conscious of some of the uh, drawbacks and you know finding places that are easier for for those that are unable to walk to be able to get in and out of bathrooms the doorways are so narrow sometimes they're not able to Uh, so there are some issues that a physical building can provide but one of the major things that would keep people coming and wanting to be part of your group is that you offer support and you offer the love and the care of trying to see what we can do. And one of the things I'd really like to tell about was when my father had his stroke and mother was caring for him. And we all, the girls, us girls always lived kind of far, so we'd have to take turns going and staying for a while. But there was a group of people Mm -hmm. who decided that since mother couldn't bring my dad to worship anymore, they took a Bible class and went to their home every Sunday afternoon and they would visit, they would sing, they would Mm. have a worship time. And there there were some other people that lived in the neighborhood caring for their spouses 
who would come over, and they enjoyed that time of getting to know each other. And my mom was so delighted to have people come. She bought all these little folding chairs. She would fix punch and cookies a lot of times because she was so grateful for the attention that they did. And something easy that we could do with people who are just caring for for those, if we pay attention to when someone is sick or if they have somebody with a disability, offer to go and say, I can sit with them and read to them or just sing to them, talk to them or do something with that person so that the caregivers can have a, an hour maybe to themselves. Go get groceries alone and not fool with getting in and out of cars and loading and unloading equipment. It's very draining, very hard. But that little bit of time, we need to protect the caregiver. And one reason I say that, Kathleen, is because 67% of those who are caregivers will pass away before the person that they're caring for. That's staggering. And it's because they overlook a lot of their own aches and pains. They don't get the medical attention they need or they they simply just run out of energy and then they don't have any strength to fight when they have an illness. So if we can be more conscious in knowing that there are people hurting that, that we could easily do something for and not overlook anybody. I'm just, you know, I'm out there saying, look at every person that's sitting around you and just make sure if there's something you can do, offer to do it. And our society needs to be more aware of that kind of thing, too, don't you believe? Yeah, uh, we've because perhaps partly because of the Internet and the value that that brings, we've become a little more isolated and separated than we used to be. And so it it really is important to uh, a lot of people don't even know their neighbors anymore. And so it's it's really um, any place where we can nurture community and uh, mutual support for one another, that that really is so important. And as people of faith, that's a way to live the faith. Even if we don't say all of the words or have a worship service, it's a way of living out our faith when we do that. Uh, so yes, it's, it's really important to be able to do that. But one of the other things I think about is you know, asking somebody what's what would be helpful instead of saying, well, this right. is what I'm going to do for you. Because um, sometimes what I may want to give and think may not be what they really want or need. Right. So, You're right. That's, yeah, and that's I'm, absolutely I'm true. I'm sure you've had... You've had some experiences like that where people have offered things and it's kind of like, well, that's nice, but, you know, um, not exactly what you're needing at that point in time. Well, it is something we forget to find out, you know, what do they need? And it it could be something totally different from the suggestions that I gave. So uh, by all means, just, Mm -hmm. you know, if you don't ask, you won't know because a lot of people are afraid to say, I need help. Yeah, I I mean, for some people, it may be bringing over uh, some food for dinner. For others who may have a very restricted diet, that would not be helpful because they wouldn't be able to eat what you bring. Um, So, you know, that that those are things to find out and know. Um, But, yeah, (laughs) providing some respite care. uh, um, My mother recently has a a neighbor down the hall from where she lives, and uh, he's virtually blind uh, and she read a letter to him the other day so you know whatever it might be that can be you know appreciated and helped uh, helpful that it can be something very little like reading a letter or uh, bringing something from the grocery store for somebody you know those those kinds of things that you're going anyway you know I remember years ago reading a sweet story in one of the chicken soup uh, for the soul books, and it was the story of a little boy, and he was called the most caring child, and the story was his next-door neighbor was an older gentleman, and he just lost his wife, and the little boy just went over, he opened the gate, and he walked up on the porch where the old man was sitting in a swing, and he just sat down by him and just kind of sat there for a while, and when he got home, his mother said, what were you doing over there at Mr. Jones' house? And he said, 
nothing. I was just crying with him. And that was mm-hmm. that was so moving to think that a child would have the understanding that many adults don't have, and that's just to sit there. You don't have to say things. There's no magic words that you can do that's going to take away hurt and pain. Mm-hmm. So don't try to say, you know, something that, oh, well, you know, they're better off or, you know, whatever. Don't try to say things. Just hug people and let them know you're there. If they'd like to talk, you would be glad to listen. And then learn how to keep a confidence. Don't talk to other people about what they've said to you. And that can even just be a tremendous blessing because a lot of people don't have anyone to talk to. Right. We have to. Yeah, we have to take another break. So uh, this is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Stay tuned. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. Oh, welcome back. This is a Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for Aflame Ministry. And we are live here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And my guest today has been Cheryl Jennings, um, an international speaker and uh, best-selling author, talking about uh, her experiences with her son who has cerebral palsy and uh, parents taking care of people and sharing this with a wider audience because Cheryl you are um, the host of a radio show uh, and here on the BBM Global Network and uh, would you please share with uh, the listeners how they can be in touch with you and things other things that you might have to offer I would love to Um, I have a a website that's called Courage to Overcome and that's with a two just Courage T, uh, not T-O, but just the number two, courage to overcome.com. If they will get on there and reach out to me, I have a free little PDF that I would love for them to have. And it is about the top 10 problems that families face when they have a special needs child. And then a little bit of some tips and, and suggestions to help them with those top problems. And I also wrote a book called It Takes Courage to be a caregiver and it's on Amazon and on Kindle. And I have all my information, how to reach me in there too. If somebody is looking for help and I know caregivers just don't always know what's available, what's out there, but this was written so that it would help families that are in a situation from having a special needs little child all the way to caring for your parents who are adults and older. But um, if they want to reach me by phone, I'll give my phone number. It's 580-591-6868. Again, that's 
651-691-6868. And they can send me a text or call me. And I'll be glad to do what I can to help. I have a program I'm working on for online that would help caregivers be confident and feel good about what they're doing and learn how to take care of themselves. So if anybody wants to reach me, I'd love it. Thank you so much for letting me share that. Uh, You're very welcome, Cheryl. Thank you for being here. It's been great to have you on the show. Um, And for people who want to get a hold of me, uh, you can reach me uh, at aflameministryconsulting.com. That's like as on fire, aflameministryconsulting.com. Also on Facebook with the same title, Aflame Ministry Consulting. And um, that two good ways to reach me and I'd love to have you re- leave some comments any suggestions for that you may have for other topics and other guests here on the show please do that here on the BBM Global Network and um, I've been great having you on the show Cheryl one thing I want to mention yet you. before we sign off and that is that you talked about the power and the need for confidentiality. And I want to remind our listeners how really important that is when you're uh, helping somebody who's a caregiver. They may share some stories with you. They may share some uh, pains and hurts that are going on in their life. And it's, it's really important not to then share that with your friends and with everybody else in your faith community or whatever. If somebody trusts you enough to share that with you, Please hold that in confidence. And if it's something that you think somebody else needs to know about, like a pastor or somebody else, ask permission before you share it and say, you know, tell a person, hey, this is something really important. You need to talk to so-and-so. Would you want me to share that or let them come to you? So please know that those are really important things as well. I thank you all for listening today. This has been a great pleasure to have you on the show. Again, aflameministryconsulting.com to reach me. Um, And please come back next week. We'll have another show for you. God's blessings to each and every one of you, and take care. This has been a Flame Ministry with your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Tune in each week as Kathleen guides you through the many challenges that face our faith-based communities today as she ignites the ministry of your faith community so that more people can hear the message of God's love on Kathleen Panning's A Flame Ministry. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.